everyone. Happy Saturday. I had a fantastic time talking to this next person. Please take a listen to my interview with the lovely Ashley Gray. Can we start with the theatre bug? When did you get it? Can you remember? Uh, the, the earliest thing I remember, and I always tell this story and it makes me sound like a lunatic, So, but that's fine. I'm dealing with that now, is I was obsessed with The Sound of Music. I watched the film Inside Out and so when I used to come home from school that was like the first thing everyone else was coming home to watch you know whatever the equivalent of CBeebies was you know Puddle Lane all those kind of films and I was like watch the sound of music watch the sound of music and I used to put a tea towel on my head and pretend to be a nun and sing the whole score of the sound of music I was obsessed with it so I think it was singing that got me I just <laughs> loved the sound of my own voice like a weirdo um, and loved and loved singing and I loved all those old movie musicals you know and singing in the rain and Calamity Jane and all that kind of stuff um, but I never really thought of kind of doing anything with it and I think my gran bless her was so fed up of me singing every time I was at her house that she sent me off to this summer school one year when I was about eight I think and uh, and then suddenly I met loads of other people who were doing it and I was like oh everyone else thinks this is really cool too we're really cool together <laughs> um, and uh, and I took it from there really and and one of the first shows that I did was The Sound of Music which was amazing at the the local Amdram group there was an advert in the paper and again my gran she was on it my gran um she was like oh they're looking for the kids in the sound of music and I was like yes yes please so I went yeah. along <laughs> yeah and uh and gave my Brigitte at nine years old so um yeah that's kind of how I got into it really and then from from there that company that I did sound of music with the musical director and actually the girl who played Liesl broke off and set up this kind of because that was an adult you know amateur dramatics and they set up a kids one and we used to put on shows all the time and go and rehearse on a Monday night you know in the local school hall and and uh, and I just you know I, I knew that that was what I wanted to do I just kind of I loved being involved too much for it to be something that was just a hobby and yeah. so when I realized I could kind of go ahead and and do this for the rest of my life apart from just now <laughs> um that uh, you know that that was the obvious choice for me I tell you what, your nan sounds like she could have been an agent. She was on it. <laughs> oh, she was absolutely on it. Yeah, she would have given my agent a run for his money, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's great. And um, do you, so the training that you received from, you know, a young age, whether it be like the amateur dramatic stuff right the way through um, to, you know, drama school training and stuff, do you think that all of those experience helped shape you to be the performer that you are today? Oh, completely. So completely. And there's a wonderful thing being younger as well, is that you're so um, there's no fear and there's no, uh, you know, no restrictions, no, nobody's worried about anything. So you can experiment, which, you know, is a huge thing in our industry is to, to have the freedom to experiment and find out exactly who you are and exactly, you know, the kind of parts that you like to play the kind of songs you like to sing how your voice sings like I mean I remember coming home one night I'd been given a song at one of the things and it was a really high soprano um and I was like oh, oh, and it's like oh no I don't think I'm a soprano but I'll, I'll try it I'll try it but you know if I hadn't thrown myself into that as a 12 year old or whatever then I wouldn't have you know if, if things like that hit you further down the line then I might have been a bit more wary of it but um no, I think all of that, that, that all fed into the person that I then went to drama school to be and then the person that I took into my first job and now into the person that I am now. I haven't been in the industry for like 15, 16 years. So, yeah. Definitely. That's, that's a good thing for me because I run a children's theatre company. So that's a great thing that you say that. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully the children will take a little bit of something from what we do. And hopefully that feeds feeds through. It's That's true. Do you know what also about about you know theatre companies like yourself is you know maybe eighty percent of your kids won't actually go into the industry. But what this kind of craft and this skill does is it brings people's confidence and it brings them out of their shell. So even to have kids who maybe you know at school they're a bit like they're either bullied or they're you know not comfortable chatting to people. If you get them in an acting environment and 
to get them doing improvisations and you know jazz from the corner then they're automatically going to be brighter and I think it's a really good foundation for anyone let alone an actor yeah so many of the children say to me we've got quite a large percentage of ours that are in high school at the moment and they'll say like oh I wouldn't dare get up in front of all my peers and and sing and I wouldn't I wouldn't dare like I wouldn't but with me you're like what you know (laughs) because they 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 love it they embrace it they feed it and you think oh my god and, and like part of me is like that's such a shame but the other part of me is like I'm so pleased that you have this space that you feel safe and comfortable enough that you can do this part of you that loves this yeah and I absolutely. Love- great yeah no it's great it really is great and tell us about your theatre highlights I mean it must be difficult to choose but the moments that that you've gone oh my god this is insane what am I doing <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've kind of been lucky enough to have a few of those, which is is great. I think, you know, going back that that first job out of drama school, like not even the job, actually, it was the phone call from the agent saying they're offering you the part of Kim and Taboo. And I was just I remember just being in my bedroom at at drama school, just like, what? (laughs) Because I was I was still at drama school when I when I got that. So um, to know that I was kind of you know, everything that I'd worked towards was suddenly going to take off and become something. That was that was really special. Um, obviously, the show that I've kind of done for eight years and feels like 47 is Wicked and, you know, all of its incarnations. I've had so many wow moments with that show. I mean, I started off in the ensemble in, in the West End and that was my first West End show. And so that first night was a wow moment. Uh, then getting to do it on tour and it's really special for me because I left home when I was 17 to go and pursue this dream and this career Um, and I left behind all my family and and all my friends so it's very rare that my family can travel I mean my mum and dad don't get me wrong they come everywhere but my older family and you know cousins and and people who I don't see on a day-to-day basis it's really special for me when I can share almost the reason I I left you know to say look at you know it was the right decision kind of thing so for me when I uh, was playing Alphaba in the tour and I landed on that stage at the Edinburgh Playhouse which was the theatre that I'd gone to growing up and going oh I'd love to do this I'd love to do that to play that role in that theatre was just incredible it was incredible um and then I, I was flown to Shanghai to sing Alphaba for one night, which was bonkers. So that was, again, it was like I found myself in the middle of China going, hmm, this is strange. <laughs> but yeah, so, so many, so many wow moments. And um, and the show I'm, I'm doing at the moment, other than coronavirus, um, Only Fools and Horses, again, I kind of grew up watching that and uh, suddenly to be on stage with the R- R- Robin Ryan and like, oh my God, there's Del Boy and Rodney here. It's, you know, there are loads of pinch me moments in, in what we do, I think, which is which makes it, you know, all the more fun and, and rewarding and satisfying, I think. Yeah, definitely. And have you, you touched a little bit about the, um, the Playhouse. Have you had a favourite performance venue? Oh, well, that one, I mean, it's such a beautiful theatre as well. And it's it's very reminiscent of, of the Apollo Victoria in London where Wicked's on as well. It's just such a vast, wide kind of um, house. And, oh, it's just beautiful. There are so many beautiful theatres across our country, though. I've been lucky enough to do a fair few tours. Um, and there's lovely, old, beautiful Frank Matcham theatres, and then there's beautiful new ones like the Aylesbury Waterside I'd never played before, and I did Nativity there last year. And it's a gorgeous theatre, really lovely space. Yeah. But, um, yeah, there's there's lots of lovely venues up and down this, this fair aisle. <laughs> um, so I know you've done stage screen. How do you compare the two? You know, what what different skills do you sets do you need um how do they differ for you in enjoyment well i mean it, they are very different i have to say i've i've done far more theater than i've done television but um of the television that i've done it's it's that trust you have to trust yourself that you are doing the right thing because you don't have an audience there going yay or boo you know you are in your own 
you know, obviously you've got a director there who's telling you what to do, but that immediate audience reaction isn't isn't there. And so it can be really difficult, especially with comedy. I did a, a comedy series um, with Julia Davis a, a few years ago, and it was quite dark comedy. So when you don't have that reaction, it's like when you watch sitcoms when they've taken away the canned laughter, and you just think, God, is this funny? I don't know. <laughs> you start questioning yourself. So, and obviously um, these... Um, TV, sorry, is is much more intimate. It's much more, um, it's it's smaller. So coming from theatre, every time I go back to TV, everyone's like, just calm it down a little bit, because I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm used yeah. to play into the back row. So yeah, yeah, that kind of really honing in and minimal, minimal movement. So yeah, it, they are very different skill sets, I have to say. Yeah. And do you, it's hard, do you have a favourite? Would you prefer the TV to the theatre? Oh, no, I, I don't think you can beat live theatre for me, really. I mean, because the thing is, on a TV set, you mess up your lines or you fall over and they cut and then they start again and, and you just enjoy that for yourself. If you fall over and forget your lines on stage, there's usually two and a half thousand people there to go, hi, you messed up. But, you know, it's just... <laughs> Um, uh, and, and anything can happen in a theatre. It's not just based on, on the actors that are on stage or the, the crew that are backstage. The audience, you know, you get different reactions from, from different audiences and it can really change a performance. So no performance is ever really the same. And uh, I really find that with Only Fools and Horses, actually, because it's such a comedy and, you know, it, the, the responses to jokes varied a lot depending on you know matinees or if the audience were too hot or ri like ridiculous things that you can't control but that's what keeps it alive and keeps it exciting and yeah yeah I think it'll always be theatre for me I think yeah Fab. and is there anything that you had to do for a role that you've been worried about or is that they've asked you to learn a specific skill that you're like oh god I can't like is there anything that sticks in your mind that you've had to learn that you've just gone why I don't know anything if I just anything that I've had to learn I'm trying to think now I don't think there has been I mean in Only Fools there's um there, there's a, a bit of uh I don't want to give the game away too much but Basically, there are moments where I don't have a lot of clothes on, <laughs> which right. was a big thing for me because I've never, ever stripped on stage before. So, um, yeah, that that was and I was terrified about that. Let me tell you, who wouldn't be? <laughs> um, but yeah, as far as skills go, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. No, no rollerblading or juggling or anything no. like that. No, none of that, which is good. Yeah, which is good. Oh, yeah, no, I've, I've escaped there actually. Now you've brought it to light. I've, I've done very well out of that. <laughs> you'll, you'll be like, thank you. That was, I didn't realise how lucky you've been. Yeah. Love it. And um, is there anything in life, um, aside from theatre, or it could be theatrical, that you've always wanted to do but you haven't done yet? Oh gosh. Mm. Well, you know, I always used to say I, I want to run the London Marathon. Because I used to go and watch the London Marathon and be so inspired on the day, but I cannot run. I am not a runner. Like, I get round to the end of the block and then I'm like, oh, my goodness, that, that's enough for me. Although, I must say, in this kind of lockdown, that is what I've been doing. I've been getting out and trying to keep myself fit and stuff. So I've always said I wanted to London, run the London Marathon. And I've actually entered the ballot a couple of times and then been very relieved when it came back and said, there's not a place for you. Um... But, uh, yeah, I think, what else have I wanted to do? I don't know. It's so funny being an actor because, you know, all sorts of things are, are thrown at you. You know, you, you get to travel and you get to see amazing places and work with amazing people. So I've been, I've considered myself very lucky. I don't, there's not many things that are on my bucket list, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm, I'm doing all right. <laughs> no no I'm not a huge risk taker I'm I'm too much of a control freak that's oh, my I, thing I am the same yeah I'm the same um about eight, eight months ago I was like I really want to learn to horse ride and people were like where did that come from <laughs> and um 
yeah I do but do you know what it took all my strength to get on the horse because I was just like everything was going around in my head you know all these ridiculous thoughts but because yeah I am I am such a terrible troll freak yeah well no you mention it I have always wanted to go on a horse mainly because I wanted to be able to add it to my CV so that when Game of Thrones comes around again you know you go horse yeah, riding <laughs> but I think I'd be the same as well but again that comes into that thing of you know we're older now and you know if we were 10 12 15 we'd have gone yeah saddle me up but um now it's like oh god no I could fall I could do this I could you know so yeah, yeah. It's honestly, I, it's one of the biggest things in my life that I'm so pleased that I've done because um, obviously I can't do it at the moment, but I was loving my lessons and it was yeah. so cool and something different. And, you know, yeah, the first couple of lessons, it was um, terrifying. And she was so funny. She was like, I can tell you're in the theatrical business. I was like, what do you mean? And she was like, <laughs> face expressions are killing me. <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> she said she said I could do so many outtakes of the she said <laughs> your face is killing me um but yeah it is one thing that I would say obviously you know loads of things are dangerous now aren't they but like it is one thing that um I'm very pleased that I can say it's a little bit of the daredevil within me the only thing <laughs> I'm just not <laughs> but definitely give it a go and um, if you had to decide sweet or savoury, which would you choose and what would it be that you would have? For just for anything, I, I'm always sweet. I'm a sweet, sweet tooth and I love baking. I love chocolate brownies. They are my downfall in life. <laughs> so, yeah, if I had to only live on one thing for the rest of my life, chocolate brownies, defos love it absolutely have you done a lot of baking since we've been in lockdown well I couldn't get eggs for about two and a half weeks we just couldn't get I mean other people were short of toilet roll we were short of eggs and toilet roll. <laughs> but um, thankfully I had uh, I've got a little kind of like pantry with loads of stuff so I, I've been knocking up a few like little banana muffins and little cakes and yeah Easter I, I went a bit crazy on the uh, the chocolate nests you know as you do <laughs> have you ever tried eggless sponge no oh. that would have been perfect for me Jen how did you not tell me this three weeks ago missing <laughs> out but this is this is just it's very dense though what uh, what's the difference oh my gosh so um so my mum works in a school and they have like world war two day and um they always make all these different cakes so like carrot cake aubergine cake what's the other one courgette cake okay i can't be doing with courgettes don't like them cake holy guacamole best thing you've ever tasted in your life from well i might have to try this well i'll have to change after this (laughs) Do you know what? I've been so lucky. I've 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 loved doing this little project, and I've been in touch with so many people, and like we've actually kept in touch over the past couple of weeks. It's been great, and and we've been exchanging random things. This is what it'll be baking. This is what it'll be. It'll be recipes. Do some rest. Oh yeah. Do you know it's disgusting. If you said to me, "Wants a courgette cake," my facial expression would be vegetables and cake. Are yes. you off? Where's the chocolate? What's happening? <laughs> Don't do this to me. But I promise you, it's brilliant. So, yeah. Ah, okay. You've got to, got to be done. Um, and my last question for you is, and I'm not sure if you'll be able to answer it, but what is next for you um, after this craziness? Has- well, obviously, we were in the theatre, kind of, we weren't mid-performance, we'd warmed up and we were ready to do Only Fools and Horses, the musical, and we had to bring the curtain down, sadly, on the entire West End. So we're just kind of in a waiting period at the moment to see when theatre is going to be back up and running. So once it is, um, I will be going back to playing Raquel in, in that for... Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how long contracts are going to last, all the kind of logistics of it. But um, I, as I said, I had only done five weeks of performances. So I was right at the beginning of my year's contract. So I I can't wait more than a lot of people to, to get back. You know, a lot of people were like, oh, nice, a little break because they've been doing it for a year. Um, yeah. 
So, uh, no, hopefully that'll, you know, going back to that and uh, just trying to find a, a sense of normality. And I really hope that theatre is something that can bring people back together again. I know, you know, it's so difficult because this is a, a contact spreading virus. And so, you know, it's until we can work out a way of people being safe in each other's company, then, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. But hopefully once that time passes, uh, people are going to want to come and support British theatre and, and musical theatre and uh, so hopefully I can't wait to get back in into that and uh, get our audiences back singing along with us. Oh yeah I think in the first couple of shows are going to be like nothing else I should imagine. Yeah well I mean it's going to be crazy we're going to have had you know six seven eight months off however long I mean we're going to have to go back into rehearsals and everything it's going to really like my brain is going to be fried. It's going to be full of aubergine cake recipe. And, you know, I need it to be my lines. <laughs> Brilliant. I love it. And I just wanted to quickly let you know that um, a lot of the children that I, um, within my theatre company, um, are watching this. And they wanted to let you know that we came to watch you in Nativity and that we thought it was a fantastic show. Oh, brilliant. Oh, do you know what? Nativity has such a special place in my heart. It's such a fun show to to do and I'm sure to watch I never got to see it the first year um, and and you know the last two years that I've done it I've gone oh yeah great I'm working but I'd love to sit in the audience to watch it because I just think fall in love with Mr Poppy and and find that kind of you know that journey that Mr Maddens goes on to to win back Jennifer it's it's such a fun show to do and oh, beautifully written and gorgeous so I saw it I was studying London um when it came at the Apollo Hammersmith is that where it was yeah, yeah. yeah. and so uh, I was studying and and a group of us were like we have we have to go to see it <laughs> you know it's just great isn't it so I saw it there and then when I came home and set up um my theatre company we went to see Elf the first year uh, which was uh -huh. just every kid loves Elf right yeah. and uh, yeah and then when we saw that Nativity was coming the children were like please Jen please you know it really <laughs> Was that nativity moment where the kids were all pleased to pop it. Yeah, that's what I had. <laughs> Brilliant. Having seen it a couple of years previous, I knew it was fab and I was like, right, we'll go. And uh, yeah, there was, oh God, I don't know how many of them we took, 23, 24, something like that. Where so we took us to the Millennium Centre. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, bus, two, two hours on the bus. Oh, wow oh, do you know what they they're lush kids I you know I'm very lucky but they were we took up the whole row and <laughs> they the best time because obviously the music is is the same you know obviously you've got added added songs but like the big ones that they know and that we'd done um yeah. they were beside themselves and yeah. yes so they they will be very thrilled that um I've got to speak to you and I actually spoke with um Dawn Dawn Buckland last oh, week yeah. yeah yeah so I spoke with her last week as well um so yeah they'll be very thrilled nativity Good. all round <laughs> <laughs> well maybe some of your lot might be in nativity in the coming years go and audition for nativity next time it comes <laughs> you've got so many that you know you're like well here we are <laughs> you could yeah you could absolutely we've got one girl actually she's um one of our eldest and she anything we do she's like I'm gonna try and make myself a little bit like Mr Poppy she's like she goes down that comedy don't she does the whole she puts the little kids like coats on her head and she's she's hilarious honestly she is the <laughs> female <laughs> yes he is yes he is brilliant <laughs> And I love it because you get the children get inspired by things like that. You know, I remember when I was younger going to see shows and, you know, 20, 25 years on, you watch these things that when you were so little and you were like, oh, my gosh, you know, it yeah. does it you and you're able to to bring that into what we do with the kids. And, and it's great to hear them all these months, you know, sometimes years down the line go, do you remember when we and you see them light up and you're like, that's just it's priceless, isn't it? Yeah, yeah brilliant oh thank you so much for giving up your time I really appreciate it I've loved having a chat <laughs> no I've loved it great send me that recipe <laughs> I will I'm on it I'm I am on it and anything else that you don't need eggs for I mean who would have thought right
I know, I know. Crazy. Mind, crazy Mind stuff. blowing. <laughs> crazy stuff. <laughs> you this goes up on the channel at some point um and i will send you uh, the link to it and then yeah yeah let me know and i can share it and all that sort of stuff so oh, thank you so much pleasure pleasure nice to chat to you yes definitely nice to meet you and um i'll keep in touch with my baking recipes definitely <laughs> make myself airy berry genuinely i'm not <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Bye. See ya. Bye. A massive thank you to Ashley. Another great interview and I've got so many more to come. So make sure you tune in. Loads more exciting guests. What a whirlwind this has been. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.